Hi, y'all. I'm Charlie Daniels. This is Country Hip Baker's Facebook page. Stay tuned. You might see something you really enjoy. Wow. Well, we went out with this Sleepy and there ain't no place I'm going to Hey, Mr. Tambourine Man, play a song for me In the jingle jam. The way we came about doing this, uh, this acoustic thing, off the grid, because it's acoustic, we did a song for a, a TV show called Hell on Wheels. It's on, I think, A&E or something like that. And it was it takes place back to eighteen hundred, so we were boxed into using only instruments that were around during eighteen hundreds, which are acoustic instruments. So we came in, I wrote a little fiddle tune, we came in and did it, and everybody we were just all taken, well man, listen to that. Wow, that's hot. Even though it's acoustic, it's that's cooking. And we were also taken with the sound of we'd never done it before. I mean, all six of us playing acoustic instruments, we'd never done it. For some odd reason or another, and we were all taken with it. David said, you know, you guys ought to do an acoustic album. So I guess one thing clicked and the other thing clicked, and I thought, Dylan. Well, it was 1969, Dylan was coming to town to do Nashville Skyline, and I expressed, I expressed, I did stronger than that, that I would love to be able to play on one Dylan session because I was a big fan, and I wanted to always have that, you know. I played on a Bob Dylan album, I played on a, on a, a session with Bob Dylan. So I went in to do the, the sessions in Nashville, as you know, are 10 in the morning, 2 in the afternoon, 6 in the afternoon, and 10 at night. They had booked something like 15 sessions to do this, this album, the Nashville Skyline album. I was supposed, I was, well, the guitar player that had coming in to do the rest of the sessions was booked on the first one, and Bob Johnston did me a favor and put me on the on the session. So when I got through and was getting ready to leave, I was going to a club gig, and Dylan said, "I don't want him to leave. I want him to stay here." So that was probably the biggest shot in the arm I had had since I'd come to Nashville, that somebody, the statue of Bob Dylan, would think that I was doing something unique enough and meaningful enough to be on his records. Just like old saxophone Joe, when he got the house head up on his toe. Oh, me, oh, my, but I love that country pie. Bob Dylan opened the world. When he came in, everything was Brill Building, Tin Pan Alley, people, writers, staff writers sitting down in a hotel, or not a hotel room, but an office room with a piano and writing songs and taking them out and playing them for A&R people, for record companies, and whoever the, the stars of the day, whoever was the hot singers, would sing them. You know, Bob Dylan come along, started singing about 10,000 miles in the mouth of a graveyard. Who in the hell is this and what in the hell is he talking about? You know, and then and, and, and people started listening. This guy sings through his nose, plays guitar, harmonica, and one verse is longer than the other one. There's no particular reverence to style or form or whatever. He just does. What's he doing? You know, if if... if if hit a bad guitar lick, it don't make no difference. What the harmonic he's playing, you know. And all of a sudden, people said, who is this guy? And then people started recording his songs. Peter, Paul, and Mary recorded Blowing With The Wind, humongous hit. 
and people started recording Bob Dylan's song, and, and the world started looking at Bob Dylan, and my gosh, where has he been? And he expanded the horizons and the parameters so far with changing music and putting a freedom to creating music. It did not exist before. This is before the Beatles or before anybody. He was the man. He was the one. He was the one that, that in my estimation, got his foot in the door and kicked the door down. <laughs>